Hey guys, Galusia here, and today I am very, very excited to be bringing you Civilization Revolution. This is something that I have been wanting to do for ages, and I can finally do it. I can finally bring it to you, my viewers. You have no idea how excited this makes me. Like, no idea. I, a long time ago, I actually made three videos for this. And a lot of you have seen it, a lot, because a lot of people have asked about this and said, when are we going to get more? Well, I had technical problems and whatnot with my capture card that I was using to get this originally, so I wasn't able to bring you any more footage of it. Well, I just got a new capture card. It's it's a beast of a card. It's an Avermedia Media uh, Live Gamer Portable, and it's a great card. It works awesome. And, uh, little barbarians here. So, I, I'm finally able to bring you Civ Rev. You have no idea how excited I am about this. And I know that a lot of you are also excited about this. Because, like I said, this has been a long, long time in the making. So, this has me very, very pumped up. So, throughout this gameplay, I'm, I'm going to be running through it. I'm going to be running through it how you typically would. But... I'm also see if I can steal that encampment away from him. I'm also going to be pointing out any of the not obvious differences in the game to Civ 5. I've done a lot of playthrough for Civ 5, and a lot of you may not be aware of what this game has going on compared to Civ 5. There's a lot of differences. So we're gonna go through that and kind of see how that works out. Right off the bat. The health is handled very differently for the units. I have three units standing there, and basically the health is how many units are in that unit. So there's three guys. It, after this battle is done, if one of them gets killed, then I have two guys. If I heal, then I get that third guy back. That also determines your strength, which you can see right here. They spell it out for you. My attack is two. There's is .5. I have the advantage. Doesn't always guarantee a victory. It's not straight math. There's a certain amount of randomness to the whole process. But, so it's it's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee that you're going to win just because I have four times and I clearly had the advantage. Not a guarantee. But, typically, that's how it's going to go. It's going to go in your favor normally. Yes, let us have peace. Um, one thing I've noticed about this game is that I think probably because it was designed for the console and it's not it's not designed for the PC and the PC gamers that it's a much faster pace and I noticed that other civs are uh, much quicker to you know like declare war on you or something to that effect like they're they're gonna be after you to a certain degree um, it's a lot harder to keep good relations with the other civs. They're really out to get you, and I think that's to to speed up the whole thing. Because again, it's for consoles, so they don't want the gameplay to go on as long as like a Civ Five game would. Because you know, console players want more immediate actions typically. Okay, so unlike in Civ Five, where you can see the entire tech tree, you can select something way down the road, and so on and so forth. This is uh, more direct on you know what is available to you. Uh, I did select a harder difficulty setting, just so you know. Uh, I did want to challenge myself, so there's no guarantees that I'm even going to win this. Having said that, I, I'm probably going to be looking at a science victory, um, but. I'm not completely sure. I went with Germany because they're strong. So militarily, like, I'm not completely screwed. But I still want to go for a science victory. Now, a couple of things I should point out now that I'm moving my warriors away from the city. Unlike Civ, where the city itself has its own defense value, its own health, so on and so forth. If there is no unit in the city, you can walk right in and take it. And I am on a harder difficulty setting, so I have to watch out for that. Even barbarians can just walk in and take the city, and that's it. Game over. So you don't want to uh, you don't want to wander too far off if there's potentially dangerous things nearby. I don't think there's anything south. I think that's pretty much just water. But we do have unknowns here. We do have Egypt, which if they wanted to could declare war. So we want to use our warrior units to explore the area. 
But at the same time, if they wander too far off and I see something dangerous heading towards my city and they can't get back in time, we lose. It's as simple as that. Uh, this game is pretty ruthless in that manner. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, but uh, it's pretty. they're pretty ruthless. A bonus from Germany. I should point out that the bonuses are different in Civ Rev, that every era that you get into, depending on the Civ that you have, you'll actually earn a different bonus. For Germany, their early bonus, the first one they, they get when you first start the game, is that any warrior that you train is automatically a veteran. So basically, it's like having a barracks without having a barracks. That's really useful early game. Makes you a lot stronger. Normally, like taking out the barbarians can be a bit of a trick, but... Since they're already veterans, it's much, much easier. Normally, that would be like a 1 to a 0.5, so we wouldn't have a clear advantage. We get that extra 50% from uh, being the veterans. So you saw there we won, but we lost one of our units. The next battle will probably be weaker. So before we attack the barbarians again, we would probably want to uh, heal them one turn, which just, like I said before, just adds another unit to it. Nice, a third warrior. Okay, I'm going to start looking around south a little bit just to see, make sure that there's no threats. But that third warrior is not going to wander too far. I'm going to keep him close by because it does make me a little bit nervous. Found another now, one thing I really like about Civ Rev that obvious uh, should be obvious and I shouldn't have to point it out is the fact that it's very animated, that everybody has this... Uh, let me do the route to the city. Thieves, yes, go. We grabbed ourselves a caravan, so they're going to do a, uh, a mission to Thebes, the only other city that we know about. And when they get there, we'll get a little bit of gold from it, and Thebes will get a little bit of gold too. It helps them, but it more helps us. But yeah, everything's more animated. Every time you talk to somebody, it's very animated. And again, I think that's because it's on console. They wanted to be more engaging. They wanted it to be more alive, just to curtail to the needs of console players. Oh, I see a border up there. Another thing you might have noticed is that I can see this aluminum. You don't have to research something to see it, which is kind of nice because then I, I might say to myself, way down the road when I research mass production, I can make use of this aluminum. So now, early in the game, I should put a city here. Whereas in Civ 5, you can't see resources on the playing field until you research them and know what they are. So that's another difference. There's a lot of differences, so there's plenty to talk about. That's a wicked cool looking thing. What's this, what is this? Gems. Probably want to put a city down here. End whales. Ooh. That's a nice little spot. Now someone's already named this, so there's got to be someone nearby. Let's see who this is. Oh, it's Japan. Yes, let us have peace. Oh, another type of... See, and there's different types of barbarians. I like the... The variety. It, it just keeps it interesting. Keeps it, you know, whatever. Ah, I get to name this. See, they, they collect an import tax of 20 gold, so they get that. And we get our 50 gold. So it helps both of us, but it helps me more. Gold is always good. Nice. Ah, yes, the free settlers. That's another thing I forgot about. So, they have these economic milestones. Every time you hit a new milestone, you get something for free. Now, if we spend our gold, then we don't get to get to these milestones. So, early in the game, sometimes it can be beneficial to just hoard your gold and not go around spending a bunch of it. I forget what you get for all the milestones because it's been a while since I played. But, obviously, for hitting our first one, we get free settlers. That's awesome this early in the game to get those free settlers. We're going to be able to send them down to where I said before where the uh, whales and the other the gems were located. So that's really nice. And we got a fourth warrior. They're going to defend the city. They don't need to go anywhere. Obviously, now we have enough warriors running around. You'll notice that there's no like happiness and stuff like that. Normally, if you created a bunch of warriors, uh, you're... I'm sorry, not happiness. Your your gold per turn would go down. The maintenance fees. It's less complicated. The the console version of Civ is a lot less complicated. They didn't want to 
get carried away with the strategy. They wanted it to be user friendly, if you will. So, but now that we just researched that uh, new tech, we can actually build a library, which is awesome. It's going to take 20 turns because our production is really low, but that's still, that's really good if we're going to boost into a, a science victory. Another thing you might notice is that there are no workers. That as soon as your border expands to a new place, you just automatically start working it. So you saw when we were in the city screen, and I'll go back to the city screen so you can see it a little bit better. There's, we get production from that forest down there. We have a farmland up there, and it automatically creates a farm. If we get that tile just to the left of us, that's an open plain. It's going to automatically make a farm. It's going to automatically uh, increase our food by two. And then we get science from the water. Now, we can switch that. If I hit triangle, it'll convert that science into gold. That any of the water tiles, can you can get science or gold from it. So, if I wanted to i could you know go about it a different way another thing is it you'll notice it says push square to rush instead of just buying using gold to buy units or buy uh buildings or whatever you can start working on making something let's say i spend 10 turns making this and it's half done it would say for rush 40 gold so if you could spend some production getting it and then to finish it you could spend gold if i wanted to rush it and really like i really needed to build this library so there's a lot of different things in this that uh, the, uh, the differences are vast so we're gonna have to keep talking about it throughout this uh series it's definitely gonna take a while napoleon hello sir all right uh i think i'm gonna make my way over here to deal with the uh, barbarians barbarians are good you know for that early stuff get a hill bonus here it's nice Ooh, we didn't even lose a unit that's what I'm talking about most barbarian places have two encampment uh, two encamped dudes you're gonna have to t kill two different units but I don't think that they really produce other units beyond that. So you're not going to see a lot of barbarians coming out of the encampments like you do in Civ 5. You will, but not like you do in Civ 5. Five ancient artifacts still undiscovered. The arch ancient artifacts are awesome. That It's just like the ancient ruins from Civ, but they're a lot less numerous. And they're what they give you is like way, way better. Uh, let's do Thebes because it's the closest and all five of them is basically the same amount of gold or all five of them All three of them are the same amount of gold. So and we get the name of planes. Awesome I'm gonna point out another thing that's vastly different from the console version of Civ here in just a little bit and uh, To prelude what that difference is basically just like in Civ uh, 5 Hold on, let me see what I got here. Ah, oh, I can upgrade them to an elite status Whenever you get two random selections for this, so blitz for an extra move after the attack or infiltration, which makes them better against cities. I'm going to say cities and it changes their appearance. It'll like make them appear different on the outside as well. And I, I like that effect as well. Anyway, so you can take, they only, they can only occupy one tile. Sort of. You can have them occupying the same tile. Like, I can have two warriors in the same spot. But, if I get three of the same unit, if I get three warriors in the same spot, what will actually happen is I can combine the three of them into an army. And then there will be an army of warriors. This makes their strength and defense a lot higher, obviously. But they act as one unit. So, instead of three warriors attacking separately... It's one unit as an army attacking together. And typically, you want there's certain units you want to use as defense. This early in the game, nobody has anything basically except for warriors. But later on, you're going to want like archers and stuff like that for defense. They're not as good for attacking, but they're great for defense. So you keep archers in your city, and then you use your like melee units to go out there and attack stuff. If I had like one warrior attack a city that had an archer in it, he would get killed, no problem. But if I had a warrior army. They should be able to take them out. And that's the big difference. Okay. 
Uh, another thing, since there are no workers to build roads between your cities, you just select build a road, and it just costs a certain amount of money, and it will just build the road. Like, immediately, automatically, boom, root, road, done. I am saving up for the... I do want to save up for the milestones, because they can help you get an early start. So, I'll probably forego the road for now. But we can look into it later. The production here is no better, no worse than the other city, even though it just started. Um, so, let's go with the Great Lighthouse. That gives you the your galleys the ability to enter deep water. And there's always, out of all the ancient ruins that you need to find, there's always Atlantis, which is always out in the ocean somewhere. It really is worth it to you to look for Atlantis as soon as possible. You want to be the one to find it. If you find Atlantis, you get like two or three um, like new technologies given to you. You discover these new technologies in Atlantis. It gives you a giant boost to your science, which is good no matter what kind of victory you're going for, but for science, ob this has obvious advantages. So the lighthouse is a good thing to get you going. I'm going to explore south as much as I can, and then I'm probably going to keep these warriors in my new city so that they're... It makes me nervous. It does. Like, the fact that you can just lose a city just like that. See, it changes their name since they're upgraded to infiltrators now. Ninja warriors. Doesn't that just sound more awesome? They're ninjas. And the other thing is, I talked about how you can combine the... Uh, Units, if I combine a ninja warrior with two other warriors to make an army, it will be an army of ninja warriors. Like, it defaults to the highest thing. So, that's a really useful ability to do. So, probably at some point, I'm going to take these ninja warriors, return them to my main city where I have the other two warriors just, you know, hanging out and waiting, and combine them to create that that better thing to create the uh, the better army rather than just having a normal warrior army I'll have you know this amazing army of ninjas that will be really good at attacking cities and we can get an early victory against you know one of the other civilization cities especially this early in the game like one ninja warrior unit might be enough to take one of the capitals and knock one of these civs out early in the game Something to consider, at the very least. Oh, there's another uh, border up there. Gande. I wish the colors were the same. That kind of throws me off. Like, normal... His borders are normally green, but in this, they're not. And that kind of throws me off, because I'm so used to Civ Five. Minor, minor issue, though, I would... I would definitely say that's a minor issue. Okay, so we can't go through his borders, so pretty much our only option now is to go down. I'm just trying to explore as much as possible so we can figure out what's going on. Maybe we'll get lucky even and be able to find a thing. Some kind of ruin or something. Another thing that should probably get pointed out at this point is that there's no embarking. That I can't like make my warriors just go into the water magically like all of a sudden they have boats with them. You actually need to make boats and then put your warriors onto that boat. And then the boat takes them to where they want to go. So later on in the game, if you need to get around, uh, the naval part of it becomes pretty important. Because it's the only way that you can move your units. There is no embarking. So I think this is a good spot to leave it off. Uh, we got a lot going early here. Uh, for all the people that were fans of the original Civ Rev series, I hope that you found your way. Well, obviously, if you're listening to me, you have. But I hope that they all found their way to the new series that we'll actually be able to complete. And like I said, this is really, really exciting to me that I'm able to actually get this going again. And this is just the start. I've, I've been wanting to do this forever, so we're doing Civ Rev. But after this, sky's the limit. Anything I want to do on consoles, I can do now that I got this new capture card. So hopefully everybody's enjoying themselves. They're enjoying the new series. And I will see you on the next episode of my Civ Rev playthrough. Thanks for watching, everybody.